Hello, I'm Lisa McCarver from Thinking, Feeling, Moving. Today, we're learning all about how we can easily strengthen the pelvic floor. So welcome. Perhaps you've come to me through the world of yoga therapy or perhaps through clinical sexology. In this video, both worlds collide and I think that that's wonderful. This video will have a bit of theory at the beginning, not too, too much. It's just to understand how the pelvic floor works and it will help you to do some visualizing of which muscles in particular you should be engaging for when you come to your physical practice. Now, I request that there is a little bit of equipment that you have on hand, so let's go through them. I'd like you to please uh, have a yoga strap or a belt or a scarf, yeah? The other thing is to have a mirror. It can be the size of a hand mirror or, or something a little bigger is fine. A yoga bolster or a firm pillow, either's fine. And a rolled up towel, please. So this video, Strengthening the Pelvic Floor, is appropriate for people who are needing to access better support for bladder and bowel control, pelvic organ support, pelvic stability, and to have better sexual function for things like uh, strengthening erections, help to prevent premature ejaculation, have stronger orgasms, and to have increased sexual sensation and pleasure. Okay. In the next slide, I'm going to uh, show you some pictures of anatomy. So just giving you a heads up, it's going to involve some genitalia and it's also going to be a little bit explicit, but it's important to understand uh, what parts of your body are going to be engaged. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the next slide. There we go. All right, so here we have our anatomy of the pelvic floor. We've got the pelvic floor for assigned females at birth and assigned males at birth. So the pelvic floor is slightly different between both. I'll just be quiet for a moment to allow you to take in all that information because there is a lot there. If we look at the cross section, let's look at the assigned female at birth. So the pelvic floor are these muscles just like a hammock down here from the pubic bone at the front of the body, reaching all the way around to the coccyx at the back of the body and clearly in, in between um, both sides of the pelvis as well if we're going from, from left to right. So very low and in the assigned male at birth. Okay. I'd encourage you to think about the pelvic floor as layered muscles and the shape of it, if we take a, a little bit of a close look, just see how it's roughly in a diamond shape, yeah? So if we're thinking about the diamond from the triangle at the front of the diamond of the body and the back diamond and also with the assigned male at birth also there is kind of like a diamond shape. So assigned male at birth and assigned females at birth um, both have perineums. So in the assigned female at birth, the perineum is a space between the anus and the vaginal canal. And then the assigned male at birth is between the anus and the scrotum. So if you can think of this as a center point, for the front and the back of the triangles. Okay. So the, the pelvic floor, this, this hammock, so to speak, 
it supports our organs like the bladder, the bowel and the uterus if you have a uterus. And it's quite important for the pelvic floor muscles to be just right, not too tight and not too lax. Because if you have both ends of the spectrum, uh, you can find yourself uh, being in a spot of bother. So if it's too tight, it can cause uh, some painful conditions such as pain in the lower back, the hips, the abdomen, and it can also make penetration of the vagina or the anus be quite painful as well. And if it's too lax, it can lead to urinary and bowel incontinence, difficulty in maintaining erections, and it can also increase the incidence of prolapse. So just right. So there is a, another video on my YouTube channel for clients who are wanting to access a practice for relaxing the pelvic floor. If you have pain, this isn't the video for you. Okay, please um, look at the other video in the, in the series. And just another note on pain. If you uh, experience pain, please go and actually get a physical examination by a specialist because they just need to make sure that there is nothing untoward uh, going on that you might not be aware of. So please, I encourage you to strongly get checked out. All right, I'm just going through my notes here, making sure that I've said everything. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, later in the practice, I'll be talking about the, the front and, and the back of the triangle within the diamond. So now you have an idea of what area I'll be talking about because we're going to learn to isolate the muscles. The other thing is that um, when we're strengthening the pelvic floor, we're literally looking at strengthening the muscles only within this diamond shape. Yeah. Now, there are plenty of videos on YouTube that you'll see um, where people will be taking you through uh, a lot of different exercises that involve muscles outside, such as the, the glutes or uh, engaging your uh, abdominal muscles. So they're great. They can help with stability, but they're not engaging the correct muscles. So I'd like you to think about only engaging the muscles with inside the pelvis, okay? All right, so I'm now going to take you on to the next slide and we're going to talk a little bit about breathing and movement. Here we go. So how we move and how we breathe um, has a really big influence on our pelvic floor and the amount of pressure that we have inside our abdomen. I'm not sure if you are aware, the pelvic floor goes up and down with each breath, as does the diaphragm. So the diaphragm sits underneath the lungs. So every time you breathe in and the lungs expand, the diaphragm goes lower and the pelvic floor also drops at this time. So there can be uh, times when you have more pressure inside the abdomen when you breathe in and the pressure becomes less when you breathe out. So if you're thinking about things like um, uh, uh, lifting, coughing, sneezing, all these sorts of things, and the amount of pressure that is within our body. So ideally, we can engage the pelvic floor on the back of an out breath which will help uh, keep things working a little better inside our bodies, yeah? Okay. Just going through my notes. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about diaphragmatic breathing, which is also known as the yogic breath. I'm going to sit up a little bit higher here and move my camera down just a, a wee bit here. There we go. So I have uh, a scarf here. So you can use a yoga strap. And I'd like you to put one hand on your chest and the other hand on your belly. 
tuning into the subtle movement of the chest and the belly with each breath. So observe when you inhale, there's a lift and expansion. Exhale, inhale, exhale. I'm exaggerating the movements of my hands. Keep breathing. Now, often when we breathe, we're often just thinking about the front part of the body when we should be thinking about our lungs expanding in all directions. So what we can do to help us tune into this sensation is to put a belt or a strap just gently around the rib cage and breathe. So we get the proprioception or we get a sense of where our body is in relation to its surrounding space. So we can really have a sense of this 360 degree breathing. The movement of the belly is happening just due to the breath, not because I'm pushing my belly out, yeah? So with diaphragmatic breathing or yogic breathing, we're moving the breath to all of the lobes of the lungs. We're moving the energy downwards as well, not just up. So it's up and down. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And your breathing ideally should be subtle and smooth. So when the breath is slow and steady, this also induces a relaxation response in the body as well as the mind. Okay, so uh, that's all that I wanted to say with regards to the theory and I'll see you in the room for the practice. Thanks for listening. Okay, so now we're going to have a little bit of a more understanding of our own bodies in relation to the pelvic floor. So now is the time to get a bolster or a couple of really firm cushions and a rolled up towel. Okay. I'd like you to sit up nice and tall. If you have any issues with your knees, you can put... Um, some cushions underneath the knees just to soften that a little bit. Tilting your pelvis so to allow your belly to be soft and you have a natural lumbar arch in the lower back. Sitting up tall through the spine. Come to the breath. Thinking about the new information that you have about when you inhale, when the lungs expand, the diaphragm moves down, the pelvic floor moves down, and on the out breath, they come back up again. Okay. Now take your mind into the space of your genitalia. So I'd like you to think about the contact points of your genitalia in contact with the towel and your perineum and your anus. 
So there should be sufficient pressure against the bottom section of your body so that when you are beginning to breathe and engage particular muscles, you're going to have proprioception, so feedback from the contact points around you, yeah? Okay. So just noticing the sensation of pressure. Now thinking about that diamond shape of your pelvic floor, the front towards the body and the back end towards the back of the body of your pelvic floor. Now I'd like you to think about the back end, the back part of the diamond and pull up the back end of the diamond, the muscles around there, and it might be the sensation as if you're holding back wind. So just engage and contract that a few times, but just check that you're not engaging your glute muscles because we only want to be trying to focus on the muscles that are inside the pelvis and not outside. And now have a go at practicing engaging the muscles in the front of the pelvic floor, so the top part of the diamond. So that's the space um, of the perineum and towards the direction of the pelvic bone, sorry, the, the pubic bone. Okay, so this sensation is like uh, as if you're trying to prevent your body from urinating. if we can isolate the different muscles. From turning the muscles in from the back of the triangle to the front, it's helpful to perhaps to imagine like a zippering up sensation. Okay. Now let's check using the mirror that we're actually engaging the right muscles here. So if you um, have assigned male at birth genitalia, what you can do is use a mirror and um, just place it down in front of you, standing naked and when you're looking into the mirror, when you're engaging the muscles from back to front, you should be able to see that your scrotum lifts and then lowers each time. Just observe. And if you're a female assigned at birth, what you can do is to place the mirror between your feet, lean up against something so you're looking at, uh, at your genitalia and having a go at engaging the right muscles. Now, for females, it's going to be important to observe if you see any bulging that is happening, then please stop. Um, that's an indication that you would need to see a specialist because uh, you may be actually pushing out rather than pulling up the muscles that are engaged. It's useful to have the diagram next to you to see what muscles are actually being engaged as well. Okay. Now let's do an actual practice and I'll guide you through. Okay, so we're going to do the next practice lying down. You can do it seated as well, but I wanted to give you the variation so that you can experience it in different ways. So lying down on your back and just allow your back to be relaxed and comfortable. 
Again, connecting with the breath. In your mind's eye, visualizing the movement of the pelvic floor and diaphragm with each breath. And as we know, the movement is important with the breath so that we can move with intention. So things like uh, coughing, laughing, to lift heavy equipment, we can make sure that we're engaging the pelvic floor appropriately. And we know that there is more space and it's healthier to engage the pelvic floor uh, when we have already exhaled. So inhale and exhale. And pulling up the pelvic floor at that time. We're now going to have a go at engaging the back of the triangle, so from the perineum to the anus, and then for the front of the, the triangle of the diamond, from the perineum towards the pubic bone. So here we go, inhale, exhale, squeeze the back, squeeze the front and relax, inhale, exhale, squeeze the back, squeeze the front and exhale. We're going to do eight more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, squeeze, five more, inhale, exhale, squeeze, inhale, exhale, Squeeze, inhale, exhale, squeeze, inhale, exhale, squeeze, inhale, exhale. Squeeze and rest. So you may have noticed if you're new to engaging your pelvic floor that your muscles felt a little bit flighty or um, were pulsing a little bit. So they will, as they get stronger, um, it will be easier to do so. And while we're resting, I also wanted to mention that the cue of when I say... Um, uh, imagine that you're trying to stop urinating. I, it's really quite important that you don't actually try to hold on and stop urinating, particularly mid-flow. Um, in the past, this used to be a, a cue, and uh, we now know that it's actually quite um, unhealthy to do that. So please only do these exercises when you're not urinating or you, you don't have the urge to. So now we're going to have a go at the uh, 
turning on and turning off 10 times, but we're going to engage the pelvic floor muscles and hold for a count of 10. And when we're doing this, please continue to breathe freely. Okay? All right. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Pull. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Let go. Inhale. Exhale. Pull up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Inhale. Exhale. Keep breathing throughout the practice. Pull up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Letting go. Don't engage your glute, your glute muscles. Okay, inhale, exhale, and engage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Inhale, exhale, engage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Inhale, exhale, pull up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, relax, letting go, and inhale, Exhale, pull up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, let go, inhale, exhale, pull up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, exhale, let go, you're breathing right throughout your practice, inhale, exhale, pull up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, let go, inhale, exhale, Pull up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let go. I can't remember if we've done nine or ten, so we'll do one more. Okay, inhale, exhale, and pull up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and release. Rest. Just check that you're not engaging your glutes, so just focusing on the muscles inside your pelvis. Now we're going to do. Um, another set and this time we're going to do um, short ones so on off on off and we're going to engage the back and front so that's considered one on and off one on and off okay ready here we go one 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So that is one set. Just move the camera. Sorry, it's one practice. Okay, now when you're doing your daily practice, we did that lying down, but you can absolutely do it uh, sitting up in the chair like uh, we were having a go at doing on the cushions just here. It's, uh, it's good to get into forming a habit with it all. So uh, perhaps place some uh, notes on your phone or on your watch or put sticky notes around so that you get into the practice. And when you're feeling a little bit more confident to do it, you can do this anywhere, whether you are uh, sitting down or standing or lying down. Yeah. Um, and think... So it's good to do uh, three different sets of what we just did throughout the day uh, to increase and to maintain the strength of your pelvic floor. Okay, thank you very much for watching and keep practicing. Thank you. Bye.